Okay, the floor is yours, Arno. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the DSC call. Uh, as always, please, if you're new to the call, keep take a look at the antitrust policy notice that is being displayed. You're all supposed to be familiar with it. There's also a code of conduct that you're supposed to be familiar with, which we won't go through now, but basically it's linked from the agenda. You can follow the links. And uh, <coughs> it basically it tells you to behave like a decent human being. The, pub, the, the calls on the way are public. Everybody's welcome to participate. And so here we are. All right, so quite a bit of us are here in the room. We have a bunch of, I, many we are. Uh, I would say, but just so you guys know, those of us that the maintainers submit in Minneapolis are about like 30 in the room right now, maybe 20. <coughs> so let's get started. The, the boot camp Russia, Silona, you want to give us an update? Uh, you know what, I haven't checked the registration numbers, but they're getting close to 200. Um, and we've got some additional session leaders that hadn't signed in yet, that will, but will be, so we should be okay on session leaders. I'll just have to make sure to recruit locals more. Um, but other than that, everything's go. What are session leaders supposed to do beforehand? Um, so session leaders, if they're, if they, most are, have already prepped all of their materials, um, but we are also doing things unconference style, so there is a grid. And so there are additional session leaders that we always recruit on premises where they sit there and they're like, oh, so we can go and talk about something we want to talk about and create a work group or something along those lines. I'm like, yeah, go do it. And so there's those kind of things that always happen. And so those session leaders don't actually have to plan anything other than their own levels of expertise. Okay. All right, thank you. So when it comes to the quarterly reports, there are three reports due. Two of them were submitted, the Fabric and the Sotuk one. Is there any questions about any of those, or is there something that reporters <coughs> want to highlight to the TSC today? <coughs> so I have a question about the Sotuk report. Um, we actually, you know, the, the issue came up during the, uh, the, the meeting here, the maintainer summit, about you know, one of the challenges we seem to have uh, with integrating different components across projects is the programming language. And I noticed in the SOTUT report that SOTUT is going through this uh, rewrite in Rust, but not everything from what I understand is in Rust yet, and so they have to do cross boundaries between the language, and um, they are reported some issues with regard to performance impact. And so I, I'm curious to know, you know, is there a lesson to learn from this? And what's your take on the future? Do you think this is just a temporary problem they're going to be able to address? Yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's because the entire code base for the, the validator node had been originally in Python. And then in order to move it to Rust, we started taking off modules one by one. But whenever you want to communicate across modules, then you've got to serialize it over the FFI. Um, and that has gone relatively smoothly, with the exception of uh, when we deal with our forking consensus for POET. There's a lot of complicated things that happen there, so there's more of this back and forth. And so when we go through our long-running tests that we do before making a release, that exposes things that come up, you know, 100, 1,000, 10,000 blocks or something through the, the life cycle of the chain. And so some of those deeper problems were showing performance regressions uh, as part of being in this intermediate state between languages. But do you expect the problem to go away because eventually everything will be in Rust and the, there won't be this right. boundary crossing anymore? Right, right. It, there will yeah, be so that time. doesn't, you know, but very well for this notion that we can have libraries like Ursa in Rust and whatever language you have, it's okay because you can use it. You can always integrate with them. I don't think that that's a correlation. 
you don't think that problem will appear everywhere we do that? I think there's lots of examples where you use a library that's written in one language by calling it from another thing. It's great. Really the sawtooth performance issue there is sort of unique to sawtooth and migrate something. Okay. It's also gRPC, isn't it? So it's that's much more expensive than a than a Rust CFFI. Um, I, I wouldn't draw too many conclusions from one defect. Okay, I mean, if that's the thing, that's what I wanted to ask because I was very confused with it. This was really just, you know. Yeah, it's mentioned there because it held up the release. So we're treating it like a defect because that's mm -hmm. what it is. All right. Okay. Any other questions from anyone else? Um, I know this is this is Angelo. So it's more than a question. I would I would uh, I would like to do this consideration because um, all, all I guess all the TC, uh, TSC member agrees that uh, the fact that we should have the project um, interoperate more or try to collaborate. So I see here that Soulsuit has released the PBFT already. Um, so how can we foster the, this interoperability? For example, in this specific case, uh, the, the, this BBFT may be used by Fabric as uh, consensus algorithm. Uh, or uh, so do, do you have any recommendation here? Because someone has to put some effort. That, that's the thing. But we have to push at, at some point. Yeah, I get that. I mean, Angelo Weber has hard time hearing you. I th it sounds like you're like speaking too loud, too close to the microphone here. So it's distorted. Uh, is, is it better now? Okay, try again slower. <laughs> is it better now? Yes, right now it's good. So don't speak too fast. We can try okay. again. Please. Yeah, yeah, I was saying um, about the, the the fact that all these TSC members are uh, said that we should find a way to have the projects, uh, the Hyperledger project, projects collaborate more or be interoperable in some way. So SoulFoot has this uh, PBFT algorithm now, that this is what we, they, they've released that already. How can we foster this collaboration between multiple projects, uh, like integrating this PBFT protocol in Fabric, for example? So how can we do that? Okay, thank you. We understood much better this time. <laughs> Dan, do you have a response? Um, so there's a very loose notion, or it's been discussed from time to time to create some sort of common uh, consensus library. Um, so that's that's one area. That's not something that I think we would want to enter into lightly, because these things are pretty complicated. Uh, but I think that the abstractions that are created to support forking and non-forking consensus in SOTU, there's bound to be lessons that can be extracted from that to be adopted by other projects, either through a project of its own that the other projects adopt or uh, directly. So, I mean, to answer your question, you know, practically speaking, you know, it's just a matter of connecting with the right people from SOTU that are working on this part of the code and see how you guys can work out some, you know, integration path. And then, you know, whether this should become a separate project, like a consensus library kind of thing, we can take that on later on. That shouldn't stop you right now. Well. Consensus is particularly difficult because right now all of the platforms uh, link into the chain code or smart contract layer a little differently with their consensus algorithms. Um, so it'll be a, a tricky problem, but I think something definitely worthwhile in the long run. But I mean, you know, generally speaking, I mean, like what we've been doing during the last two days at the maintainer summit is a lot of discussions along those lines, right? We have people from different projects with common interest and in integrating different pieces and say, okay, let's get together, discuss how it works, how it might look, what it might look like, and then try to figure out a plan forward. And so I think my first answer is to try and do exactly that for this, for the consensus part, right? 
So yeah. I think if it's a matter for you, Angelo, to connect with the right people from the SOTUTH project, I think we can, maybe Dan, you can take the action item to figure this out. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's the right path. Does that answer your question? So I don't know. I'm not really a consensus guy, so I'm more a crypto guy. So I, I might connect better with Ursa, the, the Ursa project. But was, I was more curious on how can we nudge uh, the participants in doing that? Because at some point, someone has to put an effort, right? Uh, so can we do something as TSC uh, members? Can we do something to nudge? these members in the right direction to say hey, maybe it's better if you, you report also that you did something to bridge your platform to other platforms um, so angelo uh while we're on this topic this is hart um mike dan and i wanted to uh to reach out with you on some ursa stuff to discuss uh some questions we had as a result of the members or the maintainer summit um, so, so we'll get in touch with you on that if that's all right. Yeah, but that still but, doesn't answer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would say yes. Let's do that. I mean, uh, if we can do, if we can, this can become an example or a first uh, way to say, oh, we finally get a, got a bridge between Fabric and Ursa. By the way, I look at recently at, at your project. Uh, and I found uh, how to connect. I mean, it, it shouldn't be too, it should be quite easy to connect Fabric with, uh, with Ursa, from, from what I understood. But definitely, let's, I, I really, because we have to start from somewhere, we have to push somewhere to say, hey, this project should collaborate more. I, we, will, we should ask the members to, to, to do something uh, proactively, even. Okay, well, that's good news. Thank you. But so to get back to the question of consensus, how do we gather people who are interested to work now? I guess it's Angelo's question. Well, I, I think that's a great question. And that's something that, that we, we need to come up with, with different approaches to. Um, there's nothing that we don't usually Try to think how to phrase this. So it, the, the usual response is we've got a duocracy. So where there's people who are interested, that's how things happen. So, yeah. but we could have some kind of call out to say, hey, you know, there are people interested in working consensus together. You know. Yeah. So maybe it, maybe a uh, how do they get together? So maybe a personalized thing. So like if if Angela, you see that there's a good opportunity here, maybe you can try to stitch together. Like, it doesn't have to be a specific example, but like component A and component B, then it's a matter of reaching out to the maintainers there and, and maybe trying to make a personal appeal. I would propose uh, something slightly different. It, email is essentially free. Send an email, ask people, uh, you know, we have unlimited usage of these Zoom accounts. Just say, hey, I want to have a boff online, whatever. And and just you know make it happen. It doesn't have to be so uh, you know it doesn't have to be so much direct one on one reach, right? Yeah, I mean, but 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 on the other side, you could just take the code. I mean, for what it's worth, I already looked at the code, right? If we had an interest in PBFT, we would use it, right? We're not we're not focused on PBFT right now. But to your point, Angelo, right? I mean, from an implementation perspective, you would have to do something that's going to be similar to what Ursa is trying to do. Right or similar to how we use SED Raft, right? And actually, like the Raft implementation in in Sawtooth is actually loosely based on a, 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 a port of the SED one, right, into uh, Rust. So somebody would have to propose, you know, doing that and have joint interest, right? But from the other side of it, if somebody wants to proactively do it, right, it becomes down to the notion of not invented here, which is a syndrome everywhere, right? <clears throat> Take a look at what's out there and say, hey, I might be interested in using this, you know, do I need help on it? Can I, you know, do you want to kick it off, et cetera? For instance, I'm looking forward to see the first, uh, to, to interact with Transat and, and to see how can you play with, uh, with Fabric. Right, so we have work on that underway, right? I think that's the first example where we actually jointly decided to do something from the beginning that could potentially, well, from almost the beginning, <laughs> that could be potentially leveraged by multiple projects. 
Yeah. yeah, and there were quite a bit of discussions around Transact and integration with different projects at the submit there. Yeah, I think we even got uh, URSA and Transact commit. Yeah, Mike, did I yeah. say something? Well, I just, I just added URSA as another provider to Transact for signing. For, so, I mean, it was a pretty simple one, but um, uh, Sean and I pieced it together. Yeah, good benefit to get people sitting down face to face. So, these things happen at different levels. So, the, you know, at the end of the day, that's what's key is, is trying to find the people who are interested in working on it. So, does it make sense to say, let's use Transact as a blueprint going forward so we? You know, sort of watch how Transact's doing it, and then we can do a lessons learned, what, what worked good, what didn't, and you know, maybe come up with a rough guideline for our future interactions. Well, so so part of the so so to your point, Mark. Yes, um, I do think though that oftentimes it's really a function of. You know, a team, you know, goes off and creates a JIRA or writes an RFC or whatever, and uh, it falls in the woods and nobody hears it, and they go off and they do some work, uh, or at least only the people that are in the woods actually hear it, and uh, and then everybody sort of sees, oh, look, there's a PPFT or there's a raft or there's a whatever, and it's like, well, you know, if we had known about that, we might have gotten involved a little bit earlier and so forth. <coughs> I think it really is a function of being a bit more um, outgoing and um, uh, be sort of mindful of the the notion that you know when we embark on building some new capability, the thing to do would be to sort of just, you know as was suggested just by Ryan, post an email, say hey we're going to start doing this. Here's a, an initial spec. It might have relevance to this project, that project, the other project, and we'd love to get feedback. And we're interested in, you know, doing a development effort that potentially involves collaboration and and can make this useful in more than one project. I think that's the kind of spirit that you need to have in order to make that real. Uh, you know, to Gary's point, yeah, sometimes it's all just about just taking the code, plugging it in, and not going through and reinventing stuff, but sometimes, you know, as I think we saw with the sort of some of the initial um, uh, implementation of Transact, for instance, it fit nicely in the Sawtooth, but it didn't fit with other things, and so there had to be a little bit of refactor, I think, as Sean was describing to me, uh, to make it a little bit more useful in other contexts, right? So. Um, again, that's the kind of thing you want to do early rather than late if you have to do that kind of refactor when it's, you know, already being used, that makes it much, much more difficult to, to approach. So, to be precise, so in this case, when we say send an email to the TSC list, right? Well, I mean, that, find, that's, find that's right on. I mean, you know, pretty more broadly, just hyperledger announce or something. Hyperledger announces, I think, closed. Oh, okay. So I think if you can, if it's maintainer focused, you can hit the maintainer list. If it's yeah. maybe broader interest than the TSC list, if you know that, hey, this is something <coughs> we're working on um, Iroha, and here's something that I know the Fabric guys are also working on, maybe just cross post to those lists. Yeah, by the way, you just mentioned the maintainer's list that was told earlier. This was not really announced. Some people don't know about it. So there is a maintainer list. It's kind of new, and so if you're not on it, the maintainer should speak up. Yeah, so I think we might be we may have conflated two things, right? I mean, there was one question on, you know, measuring do we want to add a measurement originally, right? On, you know, or or, or should should projects, you know, have some notion of reporting about something they might have done to be interactive with something else. I think that was the part of the original question then Angelo. But on the other side, I mean, communication, right? I mean, I don't think we have to process everything to death, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure the whole world knows that, you know, if you wanted to know something or wanted to interoperate with somebody around here, we, you know, who to talk to about secure. I mean, these are the core people on the projects, um, not the outside world, I get that. 
Uh, not not the, not the people who aren't like daily maintainers or whatever. But I mean, it's not that hard, guys, right? I mean, all the repositories are open. I mean, me, I just went and looked. I just go and look at the soft tooth code to see if there's anything interesting. Just takes motivation, right? Yeah. And back to Mark's question, just to close on this. I mean, you were asking, but you know, listen, learns, and stuff like that. Le listens, learns. I, I, you know, I don't know anybody would object to this. It, it's clearly too early to do that, but eventually, I think. That would be good. All right, so I suggest we, we move on with the agenda. There was also um, architecture working group report is due. Hop, do you want to say something about the status of the architecture working group? Is Mick online? There's no report, but. Is Mick? Uh, Nick is traveling. I okay. Um, yeah, so the architecture working group has not been doing as well in terms of participation as of late. Uh, I believe Ram has moved jobs, so I don't know what exact what his exact uh, status is. Um, we can try to put together a report summarizing the, uh, the current state, but I think the working group uh, the working group uh, how are we putting it to reboot? Uh, will be very, very useful. All right, but I do want to point out the whole point of having those reports is to detect this kind of situation. So we shouldn't be, you know, shy about saying, well, we're kind of in limbo right now. Yeah. Because that's what this exercise of having reports on a quarterly basis is all for. Right? So I think it's fine to, to have a show of people that say, okay, we are kind of in limbo right now. We don't know, chair, we don't know what this status really is. Is this still engaged or not? So, so if, 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 if I might, I mean, we spent 24 minutes on one sort of side issue. I, I think it's useful conversation, but uh, there's a bunch of stuff that we need to get through, right? We'll update you next week on this. Okay. And there are other reports that are due uh, for next week, so please keep an eye. Don't make me chase you. All right, so back to the crux of the meeting. I uh, listed a bunch of issues. Again, we're back into territory of like process questions related to the TSC for the most part. And so uh, I think we did some of the easy ones last week. But uh, if, if we started at the very end of the call with the so there was the question of the size of the TSC and whether we should increase the size. And I, I kind of combined two aspects of the uh, two proposals into one. So this time I separated them because I think the first one is probably not as controversial as the second one. So initially, Chris, before even the last election, you know. Chris put together, I mean, brought up this idea that we should probably increase the size of TSC given the number, the increasing number of projects we have to have a better chance of having greater representation of the different projects. And that seemed to gather quite a bit of support when he brought it up. And then, so there's a question of how many we, uh, we increase. And, you know, it's kind of arbitrary, but I figured if we added four people, it wouldn't become out of control. We seem to have a lot of opinionated people running for the TSC for better and for worse. And so the more people, the harder it will be to get to any conclusions on anything. But I felt like adding four people would be reasonable. So my proposal is to extend the size to 15 seats. It's, there is the charter specifies it's 11, so we probably need the board to endorse our decision, but I think that's really just, it's not it's an issue, the board will say it's fine. So that's my proposal. Extend the size of the TSC to 15 seats. I move. I second. Anybody object? I have, a, I have a broad objection. I, I, I have a broad objection. My broad objection is why are these TSC items? Honestly, right? I put it in my last comment. I don't really understand why these are TSC items. I guess if we're saying 
members of the TSC, do we want to create a proposal? The real vote here is we would like to create a proposal to the board that as a team, united, that says that, that we want to expand the size to 15. I guess that's really what we're saying here, right? Because Gary's saying as an individual person, I could write a note to the board and come up with a proposal and gather stuff outside of here. So I, I guess, you know, I mean, in reading through everything over and over again, things about term length, term limits, diversity, like whatever, like, I, I don't really think that those are the domain of the TSC. So if we're just saying here that we, do we as a TSC, as a unified front, want to create a proposal to the board to extend the size, okay, that's one thing. But then the rest of this stuff, I just don't understand why it's in our domain and why we're going to waste umpteen million hours on it. Okay, so I, I get your point, Yari, and I think it, it's, it, it's a, a fair point to make. But as I said before, the problem is there aren't too many people you can ask to answer those questions. There is the governing board and there is the TSC. That's it, right? And the governing board meets what? Once every quarter or so? And, you know, if we, I'm sorry? I don't remember exactly, but I think it's quarter. <laughs> and, and, you know, I don't think it's going to be very effective to wait for them to answer all these questions. So maybe I'm naive, but I thought those issues were not necessarily controversial and we could quickly address them and then move on to more interesting stuff. I do feel a bit, you know, a frustration from the fact that everybody says that's not the things we want to work on, but yet everybody fights tooth and nail on every single one of those little things because what is this and what is that? No, they don't. <laughs> but, 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 maybe, but, 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 but I guess, uh, yeah, anyway, whatever. I, I guess, I, I mean, I get the fact that Chris proposed this originally. This seems to be a reaction. I'm just going to go on record as saying this. All of this and, and hurrying it up seems to be a reaction to like one or two people's things. I, 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 that's, that's what I don't understand. There was never an issue proposed anywhere about this other than there was some ephemeral complaints that were out there. No official report, no official stuff on this. So from that perspective, I get it if Chris proposed this and wants to say, hey, TSC, we think we should expand the size and we'd like to take this forward. I'm good with that. The rest of this stuff, I mean, it's fine. And if everybody else wants to vote on it, that's fine. I'm just going to go on the record as abstaining from everything else on the rest of it because I don't think this is our domain and I don't understand why we're voting on it when we don't even know what issue we're trying to solve. Okay, I'll tell you one thing. I, I realized the other day because people start adding stuff to the backlog, right? Open issues, and it's kind of open ended, and then it puts a lot of burden on us to address them. And I thought we really should first make a decision whether we accept those issues or not. But you're adding yet more processes and more discussions to even decide whether we should discuss it or not, which in and of itself, you know, takes time. And so Again, maybe naively, I thought so we can just solve this and move on. But, so look, we just spent another five, ten minutes fighting over whether we should do this or not. <laughs> and maybe by now we would have decided and it's done. Yeah. Yeah, but, 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 but I, I won't beat this horse to death, Arno. But th my point wasn't necessarily purely about this topic. It's these types of topics. I understand. Just to be clear, I mean, I proposed this actually before the election, before we even knew who was running. And it was really mostly in, in response to the fact that we now have, and I've lost count of how many projects we have, we have about 14 or 15 projects now, and that 11 TSC members could not possibly cover even the majority of them, right? I mean, that was unrealistic, because I think that there's a couple that are likely to get more than one. And so I felt that, you know, the, the thing to do would be to expand the size to at least make it potential that there would be more representatives from across the, the, the range of projects. So that was really the motivation. So is the proposal to vote on extending or extending and adding the next four? No, no, it's the first one only. The, the first, first one proposal. Should make it bad for Extending. <laughs> and we have had a put it out of the issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the agenda. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, so already had a motion in a second. <coughs> yeah. So we already have that. So again, anybody objects to the to the proposal? Yes, Mark does. <laughs> Gary, do you object or are you just gonna abstain? It's okay. I don't think that's how it works. I 
think there's a motion to vote, okay. and then you vote. And then I'm asking now if anybody wants to abstain. And Gary, you want to abstain? It's fine. We can read. Yeah, we can write down that you abstain. You don't say anything that's technically abstaining. Gary is abstaining to telling us whether he's abstaining or not. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, I was on. I muted myself just in case I said something under my breath in the background. So. Um, <laughs> 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 I, 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 I know myself well, so uh, I uh, yeah I'm abstaining and I'm just abstaining abstaining because I don't think that we should be voting on these types of issues. Okay. All right. So, but it's approved. Then. Thank you. So then the question becomes: the next question is, we can either leave it as is and it will get you know exercised in the next election, or we can say, oh, we can just add four more people. And there are many different ways we can do that, but I'm trying to be simple and say, hey, we just go back to the list and the staff would have to do that and look at the next four people, contact them, see if they're still interested in being on the board. If they are not, they just keep them. We don't need to know anything and they just keep going until they are full. So that's my proposal. I know there are issues. People have said, well, it creates like a second class citizen. I've done some survey, although it's not scientific by any means. I have asked a few people who are in that situation who might be called to, to be, you know, on the TSC in that second round. They say, I don't care. I'd be happy to be on the TSC. Okay. So if I, if I could just tweak that slightly and say, what we've done with the first agreed proposal, which is to expand it to 15. And, and we have to recommend this to the board, right? Because the board is going to have to ratify a modification to the bylaws. So why don't we, as a follow-on, say, and we recommend that you just pick the next four people and let them serve out this year as well. And so we're basically making, making a recommendation to the board as to how they deal with this year. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, you we don't have to. Do the, the only thing we have to get board approval for is the size increase. Yeah, I don't know that that's the case. <laughs> so in the charter, it gives the TSC the right to pick how they hold elections. Yeah, I think mean, TSC gets the right really? to do that. We have to figure out the like, yeah, the, the charter is written right like, very vaguely. When they have the election, and All of Alan them. has signed off on that, or Mike, or somebody mm -hmm. for legal. Yeah, no, we've already gone through the reddit. Yes, the, 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 the governing board, the reason we're going through all this is because the governing board, other than the number, has given the TSC the ability to make these decisions. Um, the, TS, the earlier TSCs didn't make these decisions. So, you want to have these kind of things written out, and if you want to have a cleaner and clearer election process, this is something that the TSC does have to figure out and do. <coughs> I mean, I'd be fine with telling everybody what to do, but no one seems to want me to do that, so. <laughs> Has that ever stopped you before? Well, yeah. Here's a new button, too, Gary. <laughs> All right, so, so any my, other... My I wasn't, yeah, I was the pot calling the kettle black there, but. My, my problem Mark, with this proposal, or no, my problem with this proposal is the election was held to the left. 11 members. So I voted for 11 people I wanted to be on the board. Now you're saying, well, we're just going to add the next four. That That's not what we voted on. I would have changed my voting properties had I known I was electing 15 instead of 11. So you're tainting the vote by just throwing in the next four because the election was held specifically for 11 people. Hey, can I jump in here with like a bit of history that I think might actually advise, like inform your decision making? I think it's normal. Where are you? I think it's normal. This is Dave Hughesby. I think it's normal. It's actually tradition for there to have an election between. It's actually normal to have an election between a change in a composition of a governing body like the TSC and when it goes into effect. So. I mean, what I talked about with Arnaud the other night was, yes, vote to expand it, but then also say that it sunrises with the next election. So that, to, to um, Mark's point, it would mean that you were all electing 15 people, right? Like your voting changes. So anyway, 
it's there's a long history in in governing bodies of all types of having elections between fundamental changes like so this. what you're saying i believe what you people are scratching their heads what you're saying i believe is it, we should not extend it now i mean we it will truly get uh, into play at the next election yeah you're so, voting to say correct. look there's going to be 15 seats in the next election okay right thank you we are using the endorsement votes voting system that does a preferential ballot. So um, I think the other question there is, um, do those same situations apply? You know, in particular in Mark's case, if he voted perfectly for those who got elected, I suppose that he has a lot of rights to be upset. But if he has four people he voted for who didn't get elected, then the endorsement voting platform would be, it should still work out okay. Uh, well, no, it depends on how you voted. No, 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 it shouldn't because I did the same thing as Mark. Everybody I voted, I, I numbered everybody one through 11 and then I gave everybody else the last number. Very yes, that's what I do. And that was, I mean, again, it's mostly that's just. Yeah, no, but it's clearly not flawless. I mean, I recognize that. It's just easy, simple, and something we could do now. But it raises concern then the default is to switch the proposal to, we, it will get into play, you know, at the next election, and we remain with four empty seats for now. Yeah, so I'm ready to vote against it, so I move to vote. You're ready to vote against what? The proposal to accept the next four people. No, but there's no point if people don't seem to want to do it. We don't, I, I mean, then we can no. finalize it because we voted on it, we voted no. Okay. We had yeah. a promise before when we yeah. negated the proposal. Now we, now we the decision, so I, I second. Okay, so who wants to object? Opposed? What am I voting on? Am I voting for this proposal? <laughs> <laughs> or, or am I voting for a proposal against this proposal? No, 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 no. <laughs> You've already established you're skating from all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's silly. I mean, seriously, we don't need to do that. I'm going to change the proposal to say we're not filling in those. But we have a motion in the second. Yeah. <laughs> I, so. No. So they want to make it official, we are rejecting this proposal that's on the agenda. The second one, which says, to get started, we add the next four candidates from the last election. Right. Everybody is clear on the proposal? That's what has been motion. Right. I'm still confused. All right, so now I'm going to do it the other way. <laughs> Anybody want to approve this? <clears throat> Nobody. Okay, so it's rejected. Move on. Unanimous rejection. That's a first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry? Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I said it looks like we all voted the same again. It's not you. Yeah. Gary abstained. I don't even think we need to have anything else decided. <laughs> we just leave it that way. By default, it means it can only come to play at the next election. Yeah, I, and, and, and I would suggest. So we can move on. I, yeah, I would suggest term length and term limit to be left to the board. Well, there's no no need to do an action because we're not changing anything. So let's just skip them. No, we're making a recommendation of the board to add four seats. Yeah. No, but I'm saying term limits and term length, we're not changing anything that exists now. Yes, so these are the so, proposal actually. Uh, it's like we're not making it. They sure. were, just so people understand, those may have followed this, is there was a suggestion when we started talking about adding seats that maybe we should change the term so that about half would be for two years, another half to one year for the first time, and then we would stagger like membership so that there would be some uh, ongoing overlap. And I don't think we need to have your continuity, but. Brian killed the proposal. I mean, he, he suggested we kill it on the basis that if you look at the results we have had, there has been turnover with some uh, overlap. There are some incumbents that seem to stick. And so we have continuity anyway as it is. So there is no problem to solve. So, so I just, to avoid I, I, this theme, right? I, I want to be really to, clear. A lot of the items on this list are just items that I broke out in emails and discussions that were going on, and I typed them in here. And if you look, they're like they were like one sentence, one sentence at the beginning from an email. So that these items got on the list is not 
indicative necessarily of community support or anything like that, right? So. But it's good capturing that these things came up and we resolved them so we don't have these circular things where somebody brings it up again. That's why I put those proposals along. Okay, okay, so can I move that we keep the length the same and we don't change the limit? Well, you could move that we vote against, we vote and then people vote against the things as they're working. I'm just trying to get it to one so that we can just move on. <laughs> So I'm collapsing the two proposals that we don't change anything with regards to the term limit or the term length. The only thing that comes up confusing is when we make these verbal changes to proposals and nobody knows what they're voting on and nobody knows what was recorded. Okay. Somebody should be writing it down. So could we just do votes on these two things as they're written? That should take like two minutes. So just, just to be clear, I actually afterwards Rewrite the resolutions in the issue, so with the, the pointer to the to the minutes. But all right, so first one, keep TSC term length to one year. I move. Second. Anybody object? Yes. Oh wait, no. Sorry. He <laughs> 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 unmute button would have helped there. Yeah. Yeah. Would have helped there. So he didn't mean that. So nobody objects, right? Anybody abstains? <laughs> All right, so it's approved. Thank you. Chair limits? No limits? I move. Second. Anybody Third. objects? <laughs> what was that? Third it is. Not like there's a thing. <laughs> Anybody abstain? Okay, approved. All right, next one is should the TSC have a secretary role? So this actually came up again the, two days ago or so. I mean, Brian said, no, the staff does that. You don't need to do it. So my proposal is we say no. I move. I think okay. the reason that was brought up is because of the staff now only doing the results of voting actions and such. But if you did want the more detailed pieces, then that's what you would need to take back in the this time. Yeah, so for those who weren't at the meeting, the discussion came up actually about what was the expectation in terms of like what's minuted. And uh, the point was made we only need to actually write down in the minutes the resolutions because if you want to know the details of the discussion, there's the recording you can consult. So it means that the secretary role is fairly, is relatively small and can be handled by the staff. So that's the proposal. No TSC secretary role. Second. Move. No. Yes. Move to accept. Okay. Anybody objects? Anybody wants to abstain? Okay, approved. See, this is what I expected from the beginning. We would be done like in two calls and forget it. Okay, the next one is a bit harder, unfortunately. It has to do with membership diversity. And, you know, if you look at the thread, uh, you'll realize. So the way it was really brought up initially, it was really targeted, I almost want to say against IBM. Uh, uh, at least against the situation we are in, where we ended up with six people affiliated to IBM and on the board. And so the suggestion was to put the limit to 25%. And then the discussion kind of, you know, went around and around and diverged in different directions. And we ended up talking about diversity. There are many dimensions to the diversity issue including gender, projects, you know, whatever. So, so I don't actually have a proposal before the, to put forward. I, you know, I, even the way the discussion went on on the wiki, I felt there was no clear path forward. Uh, it's a bit all over the map. As we've even seen in this very meeting here, that not even all the IBMers agree. <laughs> you know, so it's not like there's some block voting going on here. I know. Um, 
And uh, I think that the, the in, look, the whole thread with um, I'm, I'm not even going to bring it up. It's a whole thread. Um, I think is is based on the premise that somehow or other there's some you know dark hand of IBM moving stuff that's not happening. <coughs> Um, you know, as uh, I've had many discussions, and Arno has had similar discussions with people, there was nobody knew who was running until the vote started. I mean, so we didn't, I was surprised to see so many people from IBM running for the TSC. I did not vote for all the people from IBM. I don't know why I would. Um, and so, and there was no, you know, inter I can say this, but there was no internal, oh my God, everybody vote for all the IBMers kind of thing going on. So uh, it happened, and that's largely because, you know, that's where a lot of the um, interest in Hyperledger is. Now, is that a healthy thing? No, I don't necessarily say that it is. I think that it would be great to get a lot more uh, engagement from other places, but if the complaint was coming from a place where there is almost no contribution, and so it's kind of, in, in my mind, I don't think we have a problem that we're solving, and I don't think that limiting who can be on it by number or percentage or, you know, anything is going to necessarily solve the problem. If we want to have diversity, then we have to be working much harder at growing diversity in the contribution. It's as simple as that. Um, and, then, and, that, and that also applies to, you know, whether it's gender diversity or uh, racial diversity or ethnic diversity, all these things apply, right? We, you know, it's, I think it's, it's fundamentally important that the focus not be on trying to sort of set uh, any kind of arbitrary sort of uh, quotas or anything like that as much as it is uh, we should be working to make sure that there are enough people, you know, there are enough women in the in the project that there's likely to be somebody nominated into the TSC from that population of women that are engineers working on the project. You know, as, as much as it is for, you know, somebody from China or India or Europe or whatever, right? I mean, it's, it's really up to us as a community to be much more effective at being engaging than it is to set some arbitrary numbers. So I'm totally opposed to making any kind of changes. Much as I like it to be that there are less IBMers on the TSC, but that's, that's just Gary. <laughs> I, 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 didn't even, I, I didn't even vote for myself, so. <laughs> um, I think it is. I, I second the motion by Chris. Gary, Gary, wait. Nathan is trying to talk. Um, it is important to acknowledge that there is an external PR issue at play here, yeah. uh, and especially for those projects that are not fabric, um, it, it poses a significant recruiting barrier to us when there is an external PR problem. Um, I don't think that anyone internal to the project thinks that there's an IBM cabal or somehow some conspiracy about how participation would work on the TSB. I would say we have really good working relationships with all the people who were elected, and you know, part of why I think why they were elected is because you know. As individual candidates, generally the developer community likes all of them. Uh, that's a good thing. Um, and I also have the same concern that Chris expressed that it's easy to overreact to this issue and add a lot of guardrails or constraints that make it hard to get the best participants on the technical steering committee over time. And I really worry that we will have kind of a, an overreaction and we'll add a bunch of guardrails that make it difficult to get PSD participants who will, will do the work. And will you know? And really represent the development that's going on, as, as Chris pointed out. So, I, my opinion here is that in talking with the IBMers involved and the, the other members of the TSD, the ones from IBM are the ones that are actually rather embarrassed by this, and think maybe we could talk about it, this and work with each other to make sure that we don't have a project, you know, uh, end up with this same kind of situation going forward. And I really like Brian's feedback from the thread about. You know, people are representing the best interest of Hyperledger as a whole in terms of when and how they run for election. And I think that that discussion alone has done a lot of what we need to have happen to solve the problem. Gary? Well, well, well said, Nathan. Actually, it wasn't, wasn't even me who was talking, but I, I, I did want to say something. I, I think, you know, but an interesting, so not that I, you know, think that we should be voting on this type of stuff, but, you know, an interesting thing that if we're the, if we're the TSC, you know, you know, whatever the te technical lead, you know, technical steering committee, 
and we do think that there's some stuff that could be done to, uh, you know, the overloaded term. You can you can read my little last post if you want to, right? On you know diversity or whatever. Then I mean maybe we should think about things that we could enact or that we could do, um, not as like official things that we would do if we think that there's. I'm just throwing one out there, not to be whatever. If we think that there's not enough women involved in hyper hyperledger in general, right? Do we have ideas about what we would do to do that, right? Um, are there people who were working on working groups that are making major contributions but aren't as like known, right, in 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 the community, right? I mean, so if there's things like that, it seems like that might be stuff that could be interesting for us to like tackle and not, not even it's not even coming up with a process or whatever just like ideas on like what would we do should we be doing these types of events would we want to do xyz you know can we as individuals in our projects um go recruit, recruit people i think you i think you get the idea um that might be you know interesting so switch up well i was going to say i mean there is this diversity working group that just got started and one of the goals is that survey to figure out where the problems are. And using that, we can start having recommendations, whether that's the TSC or to the board and saying, these are the types of events we want to do, this is the type of uh, engagements we want to have to encourage participation. I think I'm definitely, I will say I come from a background where this diversity topic comes up a lot around me. Um, and particularly anything when it happens as a quota and then I get involved in it, I'm not really happy. And it's like a doubt in your head. Did I get accepted because I was a diversity candidate or did I get accepted because I was qualified? So things like this make me not want to touch it because that doubt is always in the back of my mind. So I'm 100% with we need to get more votes. We need to have a more engaging uh, community. We need people to feel like their voice, voice counts. And I think that's what we should be working on. And if people have ideas and suggestions, I definitely recommend joining our diversity working group call. Because I mean, I would say, I think some of the conversations, especially in, we've been a little bit sparse in terms of how many people get to come every time, but there is an active engagement there and people are very interested in solving this problem. Thank you. Anything else? <clears throat> I oh, like completely it. echo what, what Swayta said. I think that's great. And, and to be engaged with DCI, like the other activities, you don't have to join the phone call. We've got the mail list and chat and everything else. And I, I do want to point out, Tracy posted on the wiki something very much along the same lines as what uh, Swayta was talking about. So I, I'm sensing a trend towards saying we don't want to change anything with regard to diversity in this context. And we can wait for the DCI working group if they come up with some recommendation where we consider that later on. But for now, it seems like we're not ready to do anything. Right. And and That's I, right. Arnold, could I make a statement? Yes, it's not, please. not prepared or anything, but um, you know, I wanted to echo Brian's comments um, in the discussion that you know you, you're voting for individuals, not for companies or projects. Um, but the, the flip side of that is when you're voting for individuals, you tend to vote for people you know and you know that you like the contributions they've made. Um, and so there's, there's that conflict that you know you need to, the people from other projects need to, I don't want to say be more vocal per se, but they need to get their name out there because you you tend to not just read the bios and, and vote just based on the bio, right? You, you vote for the people you know and think will do a good job. So there's a PR aspect of it for the people that want to run for the technical steering committee. Not sure how to promote that. Okay, is there a proposal we can put forward that? I'm not trying to articulate it or say uh, we're not doing anything. Uh, yeah, I mean, do nothing. But I think, you know, it's back to Dan's point earlier, it's good to record the decision so that it doesn't just get freely reopened any time. Oh, you guys didn't decide on this. It's like, if we actually agree that we don't want to change anything, we should record that. Okay, so then I'll move that we, uh, the TSC, 
agrees that um, putting quotas or limits on uh, the diversity of the TSC is um, that we don't put limits on we, that we should not yeah. oh, put quotas. Right. That's fine. Yeah, that we should not put quotas or, or limits on the TSC oh, CSC membership diversity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that so I grab that text that I grabbed from the. Uh, you want me to type it in the charter? In well, well, there's the, the charter text that says blah blah blah. That could be an affirmative proposal, and then we would just vote against that. The charter text for the TSC itself. The, the charter. Yeah, there was a snippet of text for the board that says not more than. No, no, I'm wrong. It was so, it was for the TSC for the initial, initial phase. phase. It was just for the initial phase. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the proposal, the affirmative proposal, would be to apply that on an ongoing basis, and then you would vote against that. No, there's no point. Yeah, no, I'm actually people, saying there, there should be I don't be want no to put a proposal that that's not limit. what people are saying they want to okay. agree on. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for ready-made text, but yeah. Yeah, no, I understand I what you're saying. I think the TSC channel is good to put the proposal together. Then you would put it, Chris? We only have two minutes left, so. Yes, that should be enough to just say yes. You are so optimistic, Arno. I saw okay, this is good. Oh, did it. Well, oh, no, we are. Right. So I wrote the TSC affirms that there should be no limits or quotas on TSC membership diversity. I second that. Okay, let's, let's change. Everybody, I, if you approve. I'm sorry, everybody. Is I? I. Aye. 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 Anybody object? Anybody abstain? Okay, it's hereby approved. So that puts us close to the end of the call. Uh, that's great. I'm just going to uh, point out a few things. So first, back to, to you know, uh, Gary's point, you don't want to spend the time talking about this. I'm glad we made some progress. And hopefully we're be close to the end of these kind of issues. But in any case, I also want to point out that there is no other topic that was proposed to put on the agenda. The agenda is a wiki; it's open for everybody to to use. And so, if there are topics you feel like we would spend, you know, it'd be better to spend our time on, please do say so by putting it on the wiki or for the agenda when we build the agenda. I try to build the agenda at least to have the page set up uh, by Monday so that we have pretty much, you know, three days to, to finalize the agenda. And then I do want to say there is topics that came up during the meeting. Uh, we went through the exercise yesterday about talking about like, the maintainer's responsibilities. And as part of this, we talked about the different files that we expect all the repos in Hyperledger to have. Things like you know, uh, a license, uh, a code owners, and code of conduct, and maintainers. And there were just, there were questions that got raised, especially with regard to what exactly we should have in the maintainers file, for instance. What, how should maintainers be identified? There's a request from the the, the staff that there is a clear way to contact maintainers, and it's not that clear how we achieve that. So I think we need to talk a little bit about those things that we'll put on the agenda. And more generally speaking, you know, I think it's fair to say that we have a lot of grandfathering just because projects can do a different time with their own ways of doing things. At the same time, we do create new projects now, you know, <coughs> that start from scratch, like URSA, that didn't start with anything specific. And I realized those projects, they don't even have guidelines as to where to stop. If they don't have a specific reason not to do it one way or another, right? So I think it'd be good for us to define what should be the default structure. So I think we can spend time discussing those things moving forward. All right, we're out of time, so thank you.